uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining. We have a record number of participants today that have registered. So we hope that you're going to find this virtual company showroom with IBA very you know, interesting and also beneficial. Now, today we're delighted to welcome Adina Avram, who is IBA's recruitment manager, and Eric Fortin, who is R&D Director of Systems Engineering and also a CERN alumnus. Now, they are currently hiring. So those of you who are looking for opportunities elsewhere, please go to the event page on alumni.cern and you'll find the link to these uh, positions. And something which is very important is please do keep us posted if you are successfully recruited. What we're going to have today is a 30 minutes presentation followed by 30 minutes Q&A. Um, so now I'll hand the floor over to you, please, Eric. Thank you very much. Andy. Thank you. Thanks for joining uh, today. It's a pleasure to uh, to discuss with you and uh, and present IBA uh, first. Uh, so my name is uh, Eric Forton. I've been introduced as well uh, already, but uh, let me uh, give the uh, microphone to Adina for uh, a first few words. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. So um, I'm in charge with the, with the recruitment at IBA. I've been working at IBA for, for many years, as Eric uh, uh, does also. So we are all, <laughs> both of us uh, at IBA for, I think, almost 20 years now, um, Eric, uh, if, I, if I remember well. <clears throat> so um, we have seen IBA evolving all over the, the years. Um, I suppose that you already know about, about our activities, about the fact that we are a world leading innovator in cancer diagnostic and, uh, and treatment, and um, probably the number one provider of proton therapy uh, solutions and the global leader in uh, radio pharma and industrial solutions. We will present, uh, Eric will present all our uh, business lines um, <clears throat> uh, um, in a few minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, to, to operate this, this, uh, this um, um, uh, exceptional company, uh, we have uh, more than 1,600 uh, uh, colleagues um, uh, all over the world. In terms of reven revenue, um, uh, Proton Therapy stays the, our core business and uh, uh, it, has, uh, more, it, it brings most of our revenues. Uh, but uh, still, the other accel accelerators have um, more or less 20% uh, of the revenues we have uh, annually, and the dosimetry, uh, the other 20%. So uh, the agenda for today will be uh, articulated in, uh, in, in two, um, in two, um, yeah, two main, uh, uh, main uh, pillar, two strong pillars at IBA which is life uh, as a deeply human company that, uh, that, we, that we are, and uh, the, 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 the science with the scientific and the innovative uh, background uh, uh, that we have and we, we will still have in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, Eric will uh, explain you about the, the four business lines that we have. Thank you, Adina. So we decided not to start with life, but to start with our product. So with uh, the science, uh, what, our, what, our, uh, what are our domains of activities and uh, our business lines uh, at a glance, because we have only 20 or uh, 30 minutes. So we have four main uh, activity uh, at IBA. Uh, one is dosimetry. Dosimetry is active mainly in the uh, quality assurance and uh, for medical imaging and radiotherapy, conventional radiotherapy uh, equipment. So X-ray machines to treat cancer, for instance, we have independent detectors and uh, QA systems uh, based on machine logs uh, more and more uh, today to uh, ensure in an independent way that uh, patients are correctly treated. Proton therapy mentioned by, IB, uh, by IDINA is our main domain of activity. It's an activity we have started in the 90s, and today we are the worldwide leader. I would say a, a few more words about that. Radio pharma solutions is the production of radioisotopes, uh, mainly for uh, cancer treatment and uh, medical diagnostics, nuclear medicine. And what we call industrial is industrial solutions uh, mainly for sterilization uh, using uh, X-rays or uh, electron beam. But uh, today, uh, there is a 
a convergence of interest between the two uh, business lines, radio pharma industrial, through the uh, production of uh, radioisotope uh, for Terranostics, uh, for instance. So let me dive a little bit into these uh, four units. In dosimetry, uh, it, our main market is conventional radiotherapy. That is where we do uh, the most of our uh, business. And in proton therapy, because of the synergy between dosimetry and uh, our PT uh, installed base, uh, we are uh, leading the way as well with uh, tailor-made uh, detectors and platforms for uh, proton therapy. Uh, medical imaging is a niche activity uh, for um, for uh, dosimetry, so I won't detail uh, a lot about that. But all in all, uh, IBA dosimetry is the number two actor uh, worldwide uh, on these uh, markets, with about 25 to 30 percent of the share, uh, the market share uh, worldwide. Um, you may or may not know about uh, proton therapy. The idea behind proton therapy is really to reduce the side effects uh, of, a of treating a cancer with, uh, with radiation by the use of the BRAC peak. So you all, uh, I suppose uh, most of you know that uh, photons and protons interact in different ways uh, in, uh, with matter. Uh, you have a photoelectric um, effect, um, uh, for instance, uh, at the energies we uh, deal with with photon therapy, and uh, proton on their side interact mainly through the uh, beta block uh, function. So when you do that, uh, you realize that uh, protons deliver their dose mainly at a given depth in the tumor. So when you modulate the energy of the protons uh, depending on the tumor position into the patient, uh, you can save a lot of dose. Uh, at the entrance uh, of the patient and also uh, downstream of the uh, of the beam, which means you can spare organs. And when you do that, you are you have a better conformality of the dose distribution with the tumor inside uh, the patient, and this uh, makes side effects uh, much uh, more uh, important uh, for the patient. At the point that today we can quantify uh, that. And you see here the side effects compared to uh, uh, the treatment of a pediatric medulloblastoma, medulloblastoma uh, with protons or photons. And uh, for patients like uh, ch children, uh, in this case, it is really important because the long-term long side effects may really affect uh, their quality of life after uh, the treatment and after recovery. And you see here the numbers that are non-negligible in terms of uh, respiratory, respiratory capability, uh, leading to uh, exercise uh, capability on the long term. But also you have growth abnormality for these uh, patients and uh, intellectual uh, capacities that are much less impacted by uh, a proton treatment than a photon treatment. So for, for pediatric treatment nowadays, uh, proton therapy is really the treatment of choice uh, as far as cancer is concerned. But the number of uh, modalities and the uh, number of patients that could benefit for proton therapy is increasing uh, as uh, reimbursement uh, is more and more allowed uh, in the world. So, here are our uh, uh, two main products uh, for, uh, so it's only the accelerator that is shown here, but we have uh, multi-room systems for proton therapy, where you have a single accelerator and several treatment rooms uh, using the beam coming from this accelerator. This one is a cyclotron, it's a resistive uh, electromagnet uh, designed uh, in the early uh, 90s but we are still selling it and uh, making it evolving. And then we have a single room system, which is powered by the uh, synchrocyclotron. We call it the S2C2 because it's a superconducting synchrocyclotron. And in this case, we have one accelerator per room so that the system is much more compact and uh, the uh, initial cost and investment is lower for the uh, treatment centers that would want to have proton therapy uh, on their facilities. With these two products, uh, IBA is number one uh, on the market with uh, in between uh, 35 and 40% share uh, 
and uh, installed base. So we were uh, among the first uh, to propose commercial proton therapy uh, available on the market, and we stayed uh, at that position uh, as of today, even though competition is fierce and uh, we face uh, 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 several uh, relatively uh, nice struggles uh, with our competitors when we have to win a tender. Then there's the sales of the equipment, but a large part of our business in proton therapy today is on customer service, so maintenance and upgrades. We have uh, a policy uh, of uh, no customer left behind. The lifetime of our product is very long and we have to update uh, with new treatment modalities, faster treatment. Uh, we went from uh, double scattering to treat the tumor towards uh, pencil beam scanning, for instance, and all these upgrades are available for most of our uh, customers. So it's, a, it's an important part of our revenue uh, today, which is nice because the sales of equipment uh, is subject to large uh, fluctuations, but our installed base today, that is, in, that is the largest uh, among the PT uh, solutions provider, uh, allows us to have a, a nice revenue stream and stabilizes the company. So in radiopharmaceutical uh, solutions, depending on the uh, energy segment and the radioisotope you want to produce, you will have different kinds of accelerators, all produced by uh, IBA. Uh, here from a 9 MeV machine for uh, cardiac imaging, imaging and uh, providing access to uh, um, uh, small production and batch production, for instance, for PET scanners. But the workhorse uh, on PET radioisotope is the 18 MeV machine uh, with the cyclone tube. And then if you want to go towards uh, higher energy for single photon emission uh, computed tomography or uh, with uh, some uh, radioisotope for terranostics, you have to go uh, at higher energy. In this case, you use the ICON, which is our uh, 30 MeV machine. And the Cyclone 70 is among the most powerful uh, cyclotrons on, uh, on the market to produce uh, radioisotopes. In the uh, radiopharma solution market, there is the production of the radioisotope, but of course you don't inject it to the patient directly. So we have uh, chemistry uh, synthesis modules available uh, as well so that we can provide a, a full, fully integrated solution to uh, customers. Uh, we even provide help to designing the facilities, the building, and uh, some support to uh, local authorities to get the right accreditation for producing radioisotopes. So depending on the segment and the product we sell there, you can see that we have somewhere between 45% and 80% uh, of, the, of the market. It's a little bit less in a chemistry module. And uh, for the uh, cardio, uh, there is a large difference between the different markets because it's a brand new product uh, that we launched uh, this year. So what you see here uh, is a number with uh, little statistics behind. Uh, but here it is, uh, the uh, cardio uh, cyclotron. This is the smallest we did uh, so far, but uh, it has all the features of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, the usual cyclotrons with the electromagnet, the RF cavities, an internal ion source, and uh, of course the vacuum system and so forth. It's a machine that is designed to be installed very easily and is relatively small, so it allows us to uh, provide a self-shielding as well. And with that machine, we see an attraction for uh, new markets. Uh, the uh, proton therapy solution, uh, X -ray, even X-ray treatment, uh, and uh, radioisotope production are markets for uh, relatively um, high uh, income uh, countries. But with machines like the cardio, we see that we can uh, uh, start to uh, deliver machines in Africa, uh, for instance, and go towards uh, medium and lower uh, income uh, countries, which uh, is nice for uh, medicine because, of course, if you want to treat uh, a cancer in the appropriate way, you have to have an, a good image of the, uh, of the tumor uh, in the first place. So we are happy to, uh, to be able to develop this product uh, these days. In industrial, uh, here the trend is to get rid, in fact, of uh, problematic technologies like uh, ETO uh, sterilization. So ETO sterilization uses a gas. Uh, so you have to uh, 
produce, for example, your uh, medical device like syringes and uh, surgical uh, uh, equipment, but it stays, uh, I would say, unpacked, uh, you clean it, then you sterilize it, and then you pack it, which is uh, a little bit annoying because you use a very toxic gas for the sterilization, and at the meantime, you have to have a full facility that is sterile. Uh, if you use X-rays, uh, IBA was an early adopter of that uh, and providing a solution to the market. Then uh, you can, you, you of course need to be clean. Uh, if your syringe is not clean and there is dust or, um, or dirt uh, on it, uh, X-ray won't remove it. But it has to be clean, but not sterile. You can pack it and then you sterilize it which makes the whole process uh, much uh, easier. And you have also the benefit that if you uh, switch the accelerator off, uh, there is no um, radiation anymore. We sterilize at energies that are such that you don't even create uh, activation of the material uh, in the facility. So when you stop the accelerator, there is nothing less left than uh, anyone can walk in uh, safely. Here, the market is growing and we have seen a huge increase in uh, orders uh, in the last uh, few years. When I say huge, uh, I mean from uh, one or two machines a year to uh, seven machines a year or something like that. Uh, because the, the, the big centers that sterilize uh, in that way can uh, deliver a service for uh, a lot of uh, customers. Um, so this is for the overview on our product. I now uh, leave Adina uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, us and how uh, we deliver this product. Um, I will talk about uh, how we came. I told you before uh, that we are more than 1,600 all over the world. So you have here a map on uh, IBA community, on uh, IBA employees uh, footprint. Uh, you can see that we 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 are uh, a lot. Of, we have a lot of employees in in Europe, and most of them are in Belgium. Uh, but still, we are also um, uh, present in the US with the with the uh, several proton therapy sites that we have in the US and in uh, in um, in China and in Asia. Uh, all over Asia, we also have some uh, some prototherapy sites or other sites from the other uh, business lines. Um, so um, how I think it uh, IBI has a, uh, it has a very nice story story um, about commitment. Um, and uh, here you can see a picture of uh, Eve Youngen um, uh, on the top of the slide who um, 35 years, 36 years ago, he, uh, he uh, imagined to have this, uh, to found this company uh, that we call today IBA. Um, and he wanted to build a different company. Um, he wanted to build a company with, uh, which makes profit, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, okay. And um, uh, with, the, with, the, with this condition to, to have, um, uh, this profit to survive, but this, this was not the only uh, uh, purpose of the company. And I think this is a, a, a pioneering vision uh, of, uh, of, of the founder of IBA. He wanted first to, to, um, to create this company in California, but after thinking, uh, he said, okay, we will incorporate IBA in Wallonia, which is the south part of, uh, of Belgium, Belgium, to give back to his community. And uh, what is what was very important for him to create high quality jobs. Um, during the history of of, of IBA uh, 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 with the um, uh, management of buy buyout in um, uh, 20 25 years ago, uh, um, uh, with uh, with the creation of the Belgian Encourage, uh, just to counter the hostile takeover of the company. And lately, uh, starting with the with the uh, with the 2020, uh, we reinforced, in fact, um, um, this uh, this vision by the current IBA management uh, uh, um, team, and um, we adopted in 2020 uh, what we call a stakeholders approach. Uh, that means that the <coughs> company <coughs> will be uh, managed uh, around five stakeholders, which are the patients or our clients, uh, the shareholders, uh, the planet, uh, the society, 
and of course the employees. And we um, uh, decided to take some um, some actions based on on this on that on that vision. For instance, here we you can have uh, you can see on the slide several examples: double voting rights for long-term shareholders to avoid speculation, for instance, increase the involvement of current management team in the capital, and uh, since last year. Uh, we have a dividend matching for all employees. That means that uh, employees receive the same amount of uh, global dividend that we uh, that we share with our shareholders. We share the same amount of uh, of money with the with the with the employees. And last but not least, we get certified um, B Corporation. I don't know if you know about this uh, this certification. Um, it's, a, it's a concept, in fact, or a model uh, where um, uh, 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 companies who, uh, who would like to participate in this, in this mo model will shift, in fact, from, um, from, what, um, from what you call, call a model which uh, focuses on good products, from, uh, from, uh, from a model who, which will focus, focus, in fact, in a good company. And a good company is not only about profit, but it's also about uh, a purpose. So balancing this uh, purpose and profit is, uh, is one of, uh, of our priority. And that's why we, uh, uh, we decided to, uh, to get this, this uh, certification of uh, uh, B Corporation. Uh, and we uh, succeed to have it uh, last year or this year. I don't remember, Eric. Uh, it was last, last year. Last year, yeah. I think. Yes, that's right. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not just having the the, uh, the certification. The idea is that uh, this model will help us and help us to define the the working axis that we would like to uh, to invest to to be able to uh, reach this balance between purpose and, and profit. So I can give maybe some. Uh, um, oh, I will just finish on the B Corp. Some examples of realizations, and maybe you have some others, Eric, because you are maybe closer to the to the business than the I am. Uh, I think we we realize some um, special concretes for, for, to uh, to limit the the, the commissioning of uh, of our facilities in a few years. So this is uh, an impact on the uh, on the planet, which is quite huge. Um, the consumption of our products, we are looking to um, into it to to make it uh, to make it smaller. And in terms of uh, um, uh, benefits for the employees, for the car policy, where we have a very flexible car policy, and where we are looking to improve it and to uh, to suggest the things that are more sustainable, we have a li uh, um, um, bike lease also. And the aim is that, that, that by 2030, our society would be uh, neutral in carbon. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this is this is our aim in in terms of sustainability. And to do, uh, yeah, to 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 build up this company, of course, we need we need uh, people that are uh, motivated and uh, engaged with uh, with our purpose, uh, with uh, with our products. Um, so we are recruiting for the moment a lot. So uh, we uh, we I think in in uh, in the innovation and department uh, in the innovation and development department. We have a lot of opening positions because we are working on new uh, on new projects. So the the roadmap roadmap in this uh, in this department is quite uh, ambitious. Um, so we are not not only recruiting people from um, from um, external uh, for, for 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 outside IBA, but we are also offering career paths which are very interesting, depending on the the opportunities or on the. Um, um, uh, the wishes that people have, we, you, we can see at IBA uh, uh, careers that are vertical, horizontal, dual career ladders. Um, so if you want to become, uh, just say that uh, you, you would like to become a project manager or a team leader, it's possible, but you are not, if you are not interested in such kind of career uh, path, then you can uh, choose to, be, to become expert in some domains or some system or sub sub, -sub systems of IBA, uh, which is recognized at the same level at, as the management positions, because it's very important for us to have people that know um, the, the, the technology of IBA and um, they invest their time in, the, in learning more about, and of course, innovating on that part. 
Uh, then we uh, uh, we have um, uh, to support people to grow in their career. We have this uh, 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 training and personal development. Uh, for instance, here we we launched for for everyone the LinkedIn Learning is just an example. But of course, we have uh, also training plans which are very structured with certification uh, uh, when when we finish the, the the path of the training plan plans. Um, and also, I would like to talk about internal mobility. So we have about 30% of, um, of our jobs that are filled in with, in, uh, with internal candidates, which is quite huge, in fact. So, <laughs> And uh, given the fact that we have more than 100 openings, you can, you, you can imagine how the turnover inside IBA is, uh, is um, um, with, within, uh, within uh, the departments and between the departments, it's quite, it's quite high. So we are really... Um, 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 focus on, on, on the career path, and I think Eric can uh, uh, test yeah. it, can can do a testimonial on <laughs> on his on his path on his career path because he have evolved a lot since he uh, he joined IBA. Yes, indeed. So uh, let me give me give you a few words uh, about myself uh, to to conclude uh, here and uh, exemplify this career path. So my my background is a PhD on experimental physics. I worked on the radiation harness of the uh, central tracker for CMS. So some of you may have been exposed to that ex to that experiment uh, lately. But I joined IBA in September 2005, so already 17 uh, years ago. Um, I started as a physicist, uh, which was nice. It was on a BNCT project, so on boron neutron capture therapy. Uh, did some experimental work there, uh, Monte Carlo for uh, shielding of our application, but also for the uh, for the project using uh, MCNPX uh, at the time. Uh, but then moved on to uh, cyclotron modeling and the uh, more on the uh, accelerator physics uh, side which included some support to production. Uh, you may know that magnets of cyclotron have to be, have to be tuned uh, during, uh, during production. So we cut a little bit the poles, we adjust the magnetic field so that the cyclotrons are isochronous and the beam optics is right. So we have uh, developed our own tools uh, to do that and uh, 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 work with these tools uh, for a couple of years. Then, uh, uh, decided or was proposed and decided to move on to the uh, management track uh, by first managing the small team I was involved with, then uh, enlarged uh, the scope uh, with the uh, R&D on what we called at the time the beam production systems uh, team. So that included engineers uh, and system architect who devise how the subsystems are uh, working uh, together. And now I'm a systems engineering director. So uh, the team increases. And uh, Adina mentioned uh, we are hiring. So today, uh, system engineering uh, at IBA is about 110 people and counting. Uh, we have opened a position, for instance, in system requirements, uh, system architecture. And uh, we are looking for people uh, who can work on uh, beam management, beam management system as well. So how we scan uh, the beam to treat uh, patients, what is the beam optics in the uh, and the optimization of the beam optics uh, in uh, in the proton therapy beam line or on the uh, industrial irradiation uh, systems. So this is only to to give you an example here. Uh, we have people who stayed, uh, as Adina said, uh, on the uh, expert track. And uh, uh, we are uh, providing uh, equal uh, packages uh, in both tracks uh, uh, because we want, as Adina mentioned, uh, our scientific people to develop their uh, scientific network, uh, still uh, continue to go uh, into conferences and uh, bring new ideas and uh, improvements uh, on our uh, product. So that is for the uh, for the presentation. That was perfect timing and also um, an extremely informative presentation. Thanks also for sharing your um, career trajectory with everybody because it gives a really nice idea. We already had um, one question in the chat and that was from Chiara. So. Yeah, it was, it was just as small uh, because I, I don't know exactly what was meant about the dual career in your slide. So if you can say a couple of words more about it. So Adina will correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, uh, for the uh, technical experts uh, we have, sometimes 
they uh, they have the willingness to take on a leading role uh, on a given uh, on a given technology or structure. And here, they can uh, manage a small team, for instance, of uh, five or six uh, people, and still have the uh, the expert job description and the uh, team management uh, job description. So in that in that case, they have a dual uh, job description. They do both. Uh, it is possible when the team is relatively small, uh, when you start to have a team of 10, uh, then managing the people becomes a full-time job. Uh, but uh, Adina, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's no, what it meant. Is. Yeah, indeed, you are right. So it is what we call at IBA a, a team leader. So it's someone who has uh, maybe the coordination and um, and the day-to-day -day coordination of, of a team, but still is, is an expert in his domain, ex, uh, technical expertise, yes, yeah. So yeah, okay. this is a dual career yeah. for us, yes, yeah. Um, thank you, I, I maybe just profit since I'm here for another little question. Uh, it, you said you are also, you have also employees in, in Germany, in which city? So the, uh, it's mainly uh, the uh, dosimetry uh, headquarter that is located in Schwarzenbrook. Uh, but we also have uh, sites in Essen and Dresden, but those are operational sites uh, for the operation of the proton therapy uh, facilities we have there. But uh, otherwise, the, the, the biggest part is in Schwarzenbrook, where uh, we have the entire dosimetry business that is located. So you have production, uh, R&D, and, uh, and so forth. Okay, okay. It's near the Nuremberg. And yeah, no, back. Okay. Yeah. And all, all the jobs are uh, meant to be uh, like in a given place. You don't have like remote working. Uh, yeah, most of them are in a given place, but mm -hmm. uh, we are um, lately uh, uh, with, with, I think, with the situation that <laughs> changed yeah, our of course. <laughs> way of working. I think we are more uh, open uh, to have um, um, remote working or uh, yes, half, half, uh, it depends a little bit. Uh, what is very difficult and uh, people are not always aware is about, you know, the social security and uh, the, the taxes that when you have, when you don't work enough time in one country, you have to pay it in another. Yeah. So it, it's quite complex on that, on that part. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, thank you. We are, we are thought experimenting with this. I have in my teams uh, now uh, one person that is working in Nice uh, from, from his hometown, uh, so to say. He spent a couple of years uh, in Nouvelle Neuve, uh, but then for family reasons, uh, he asked whether he could work from there. So we are experimenting there. Uh, it's not institutional uh, yet. We have but we have the opportunity and we are open to, to discuss about that. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of building the relationship with the person that comes and uh, we have to find a way to work together and uh, so that it is smooth for the project as well. Uh, uh, so it's not always possible, but the, the discussion about that uh, still uh, is open. And because we have uh, a lot of countries that are already open, we have a structure there because you have employees in many countries. So the HR structure, as Adina mentioned, may be complex, but uh, we can, uh, we can uh, in, 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 uh, in a relatively large number of cases, uh, at least have the discussion because we know we already have a few of the tools that would be needed to enable the people to work from these countries. But, uh, but it's, it's sometimes difficult uh, either. Uh, so it's more okay. a case by case uh, discussion. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So now we have um, Gun, and then we'll go to Brie. Sure. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Eric and uh, Adina and also Rachel. I, I have known um, for, for organizing, I've known IBA since 2008 when I did my master's in Belgium. I went to actually visit, um, and then I went to do PhD in Krakow in Poland, and that's where they install exactly the same year when I arrived at uh, um, an IBA uh, cyclotron for doing the eye treatment, you know. Um, but I, I didn't know in, in so informative way or such detail what you guys do at IBA, and I didn't imagine um, that my experimental and applied physics knowledge I could, I could use uh, to work at IBA, so this is this is very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, and also, as you said, uh, uh, teleworking is something um, 
it's it's not an institutional institutional, but you can think about it. Uh, so it's also interesting that uh, you you are open to that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And I will I will definitely have a look at uh, all the open positions that I can uh, I can think of uh, suitable for me and uh, see if I can apply. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So now, um, Brieu, uh, would you like to come on cam and ask your question, please? Yes, sure. Thank, thanks a lot for, for the talk. Very interesting. Uh, I have just a curiosity question about the, the PT. You mentioned you have a superconducting version and a regular magnet version. The superconducting is, is cheaper. Can you comment on the operation cost? Because you have cooling, I guess, in addition to that one. Uh, on the long run, which one is uh, more interesting? So it's, to say? A, it's a good question. So indeed, and, and uh, the, the question on superconducting magnets, uh, we've asked it to ourselves for many different products. And we decided to go only for the uh, S2C2 uh, these days for proton therapy, because uh, at the uh, energy and size of the cyclotron, uh, the resistive version uh, uses more power consumption than the uh, superconducting magnet as a whole, so including yes. cooling. Uh, but uh, so to, to give you numbers, uh, the um, normal conducting coil of the C230, the, so the original PT product uh, at IBA, that coil uses about 200 kilowatts of electrical power and the associated cooling, whereas uh, we have about 40 kilowatts of uh, cooling for the S2C2 uh, to reach a higher magnetic field. But we explicitly, so for proton therapy, we decide that it makes sense. But uh, if you look elsewhere uh, at our products in proton therapy uh, already, we decided not to go for uh, superconductivity in our gantry. So the rotating arms that uh, allow us to treat the patient at different angles. Uh, so it's really a, a, a beam line that is mounted on a rotating gantry. And the magnets on, the, on that gantry, uh, in fact, are not used all the time. So uh, you may see that some have tried uh, on the market to have uh, superconducting uh, gantries for proton therapy, but uh, in the end, we think uh, it does not make sense. You don't gain much in size and uh, you pay for the cooling uh, and it doesn't really make sense. Uh, for uh, radio pharma solution uh, as well, the small cyclotrons uh, they are not used all the time, and you are limited in magnetic fields for the beam proper for the, for the beam optics reason. We oftentimes uh, accelerate uh, molecular uh, hydrogen or um, negatively charged uh, hydrogen in these machines. So if you go towards high magnetic field leveraging on superconductivity to make smaller machines you end up uh, stripping your beam and not be able to accelerate it to uh, the full energy. So uh, in uh, Radio Pharma, we also explicitly decided not to go for superconducting machines. Where we may go for superconducting uh, magnets is for uh, carbon therapy uh, again, right. because magnetic rigidity is much higher. And there, uh, normal, conducting, normal conducting gantry is really heavy and uh, very large. Uh, you may have seen that there are projects in Japan uh, for superconducting gantries, and they are able there, they are able there to uh, have uh, gantries that come with about the same size uh, for carbon uh, uh, than for uh, proton therapy. So there, for carbon therapy, maybe it makes sense. We still have to figure out the cost and the uh, and the uh, operating cost of uh, those gantries because uh, investment and initial capital cost is, is as you said, uh, the full story uh, at all. Uh, we thought, for instance, that the last bending magnet of the uh, current uh, gantry would be appropriate uh, as a superconducting magnet, but all in all, because we use it only uh, part of the time, it uses only uh, five kilowatts uh, of energy uh, averaged, uh, which is not much. You, you don't do a lot of cryogenics for, uh, with five kilowatts. So, uh, so uh, we are really uh, discussing at this, but uh, uh, using a lot of common sense and uh, trying to balance to find the, uh, the most efficient way of using the technology. Thanks a lot. Very instructive. If I just may, because you mentioned it, uh, where are we with this the, the carbon therapy? You, I think you didn't touch upon that in the talk. No, I didn't mention it. Because it's it's actually it's a, it's a project IBA is uh, deeply involved with, but okay. it's officially not an IBA product. So IBA has a joint venture uh, with uh, other investors in France 
Uh, it's called Normandy Hadron Therapy. Uh, and uh, we are building uh, a superconducting cyclotron for carbon and other uh, light ions uh, for therapy uh, with them. Uh, and we, in fact, most of the uh, project team is uh, IBA based, but the idea on the long term is to have a separate company to market uh, those products and, uh, okay. and operate uh, the sales. But, uh, but today, if you are interested in carbon therapy, uh, feel free to, uh, to join us and discuss as well, because uh, both IBA and Normandy Atom Therapy are hiring for, uh, for that project as okay. well. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brieux. And now I'll hand over to Anna, if you'd like to please come on cam with your question. Well, first of all, thanks for the talk. It was very nice, um, very clear. Um, so my question was, in fact, very related to the previous question. So I, always, I was also curious about the superconducting and the, pre, uh, the, um, the, what the plans in the company for going through superconducting or not. Because you mentioned the, the cyclotron used for the five uh, rooms for therapy. I, I don't remember, but it's already like some years built some years ago. And are you planning to, uh, I was thinking if you were planning to upgrade or if you were planning to go to superconducting technology in that uh, cyclotron? Maybe, <laughs> uh, I don't know yet. So we, we see a shift uh, in the competition uh, with this machine. Um, but uh, on the product side, uh, it's not completely decided uh, yet. And the, the jury is still out. Um, so why is that? First, uh, the multi-room system on which we have a normal conducting uh, cyclotron these days uh, may be uh, a, a kind of product that is becoming out of fashion uh, in the sense that uh, single room systems with an accelerator per room uh, may be uh, more uh, uh, scalable uh, on the long term. Uh, if they are produced in larger quantities, we may have um, gains in the, uh, in the production cost so that in the end, the multi-room system would not be attractive uh, anymore. But that is not completely clear because in China, for instance, uh, you don't get a license per treatment room, you get a license per accelerator. Uh, so in China, for instance, uh, then a multi-room system may be still uh, fashionable for uh, a couple of years. And that is why we are in a collaboration with CGN, uh, China General Nuclear. It has been, uh, it has been announced uh, end of 2020, uh, I think, uh, a year and a half uh, ago or something like that, to actually transfer uh, our Proteus Plus, the multi-room system, to China, working with them so that uh, they can produce locally and uh, that IBA would still be in the loop for the Chinese market that is closing itself uh, more and more. So there, through a strategic partnership, we will uh, have a look at uh, what the multi-room system uh, future uh, is. And they may be interested in developing a superconducting machine in collaboration with IBA as well, uh, because we are partnering uh, with them. So, uh, but then um, even on the single room system, uh, we see that uh, some of our competitors have started to develop uh, an isochronous uh, superconducting machine that is uh, really interesting uh, as well because it's relatively optimized. Uh, so we may shift there to have a smaller machine, uh, but that would be an isochronous cyclotron. There are other technical challenges there, like beam extraction and, uh, and that, kind of, that kind of things. The RF power uh, on an isochronous machine is uh, higher as well. Uh, so it's not clear that uh, it makes sense if you look at the global uh, power consumption of the, of the system. And then there are new treatment modalities uh, that also add uh, new requirements to the system in terms of beam currents, uh, which may uh, reshuffle the game uh, a little bit. Uh, so there you may have heard about uh, flash uh, treatment, for instance, where you have to deliver the dose in a uh, much faster way uh, to the patient, but in a less conformal way uh, as well. And there we have collaboration to determine what are the conditions for flash? Does it make sense? Is there a therapeutic gain? And then if we, uh, answer, if we have answer to these two uh, questions, uh, what is the best system to deliver flash uh, to uh, patients? 
and there we may re reconsider a, a completely new uh, product uh, as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, multi uh, uh, multi dimensional. <laughs> And uh, you also you mentioned the previously this um, the countries and the delivery system. Are you considering um, working with CERN with knowledge transfer for because I read the like the Luca Bottura developed of this new yeah. the, the country technology the Roidal Gentry project? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, we we are from time to time in contact uh, with them. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's something we haven't started really to, to work uh, with Luca on this, but uh, last conference and last uh, discussion we had with them, uh, we proposed to uh, to have to welcome. Uh, so he has PhD students working on on that project or, or postdoc, and we we propose to have a collaboration to feed them with uh, our clinical requirements uh, on that entry to see uh, if the if all the challenges could be uh, could be addressed, but I think today they are still working on the uh, optics uh, concept, and uh, it's uh, it's more on on certain side. But uh, we are also interested in joining the uh, E3 plus collaboration that has started started lately uh, as observer and also a potential industrial partner uh, on the long term. Uh, this is a, a starting discussion. So we are looking at this. It's an interesting concept, huh? uh, but it, it challenges the on the treatment side. And uh, also uh, we have to see uh, what about the cost and also uh, the the beam monitoring uh, and the uh, and the uh, how you locate the uh, beam instrumentation, for instance, without uh, multiplying the number of devices uh, with the number of angle in that uh, in that kind of gantry. So, uh, but it's a it's a really interesting uh, concept. Uh, IBA. So maybe it's a it's a it's a nice opportunity to mention that IBA has several collaborations uh, with uh, public or private uh, partners with our customers uh, as well uh, to. Uh, to stay uh, afloat uh, as far as research and, uh, and technology is concerned. So we are really open in welcoming students, uh, exchanging with academia and, uh, and uh, plenty of other uh, partners. Uh, um, so, but sometimes, uh, you know, it, uh, it doesn't materialize or doesn't materialize that quickly. <laughs> we will see. And if I can ask last question, um, so for um, uh, pharma in the pharma sector, you have the cyclotron, you also have the synthesis model. Are you planning to go to detector for like PET scanning or SPET or? No. So thanks a lot for your, for your <laughs> answer, it was very clear. Thank you, Anna. I love your um, race numbers in the background. I'm admirative. <laughs> um, so now we move on to Jessica, please, if you'd like to come on cam. Yep. Hi, thanks. Hello. Um, so Eric, you gave us uh, some background on your experience and then your PhD experience and then your work experience with an IBA. Um, and that was really helpful, thanks a lot. Uh, but you also mentioned that there are a number of other CERN alumni or otherwise particle mm -hmm. physics, particle experiment people at the company. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have information on their roles within the company, uh, the sorts of things that they do, or I don't know if any of them are on the call? Yeah. I have a few examples. Uh, so uh, the easiest one, uh, Jarno van der Waal uh, used to be a physicist uh, at, um, at CERN as a, as a CERN fellow uh, at some point. Then he joined uh, IBA and he worked on the uh, accelerators on the R&D side for a couple of years, uh, accelerators in beamline, uh, magnet design. He now left for uh, SCKCN, so the uh, Center for uh, Nuclear Energy uh, in Belgium, working on uh, uh, another project which is closer to uh, Isold. And Isold is uh, is a PhD background. Uh, so we are still from time to time in uh, in contact, but uh, he spent uh, five or six years uh, at IBA. Eric uh, van der Krij, uh, to, to name him, uh, started at IBA in the uh, QA uh, department, uh, so on the quality side. Uh, and then after a few, a few years in QA, uh, he joined the, uh, the R&D accelerator team. Uh, Alberto, uh, he just uh, started at IBA a few months ago. 
uh, and he's uh, with us as a project manager uh, for the development. And then uh, in the past, you used, we used to have uh, people also on, um, so uh, who spent a few years at CERN and came to work on development project for the installed base uh, at the time. So not on the new features of the product, but retrofitting uh, these features on existing uh, systems. Uh, but then I think on uh, uh, in uh, in QA uh, there are there were a few other examples, but I uh, I don't remember the name uh, now. And sometimes uh, in production, for those who, who like uh, production uh, and be hands on uh, on the uh, on the systems. Uh, so different okay. different examples we have. So a part of the the CERN alumni uh, we. We have a lot of uh, PhD uh, uh, who work on the different products uh, of IBA, either uh, on the industrial irradiation side with some Monte Carlo uh, and uh, uh, studies, but also uh, here uh, in my teams on Monte Carlo. Not, so not attached to a given product, but uh, with a specific uh, set of tools and, uh, and knowledge. Uh, and we also have on the uh, chemistry side for uh, Radio Pharma, uh, there are uh, one or two uh, PhD uh, who work on the, on the recipes and the uh, synthesis uh, uh, for the Radio Pharmaceuticals. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I would invite you to go onto alumni.cern to the community map and then just type in IBA and then you'll find the two people that uh, Eric mentioned. Anushri, would you like to ask your question, please? Sure. So, yeah, first, thank you for such a nice and clear talk. So um, my question is actually a bit different that uh, what kind of opportunity is available as a like a data scientist or data analyst in IBA? Because I did not see any information for that. Thank you. Yeah, so we do have uh, opportunities because we have a digital solution uh, department. Uh, and we are looking for people with uh, with a background in the data management. So um, um, uh, I think we have one open position for the moment, and I saw that uh, in the uh, next months we will have another two. So um, yeah, it, there are possibilities to work in that in that domain, and uh, it's it's really something the IBA it's uh, it's developing for the moment. I think a lot of companies do that, um, but it's central to uh, to have. Uh, to collect the data and to be able to analyze them um, uh, and, inf and inform the, the business about what uh, what are the trends, of course, yeah. Okay, okay. So I have possibilities. Yeah. Um, we, are, we are badly looking for one. If you look for uh, Lauriane Castin on LinkedIn, you will see a video where she, where, where she advertises exactly that position. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. And I, I will surely look for that because I'm a actually a data, analy data analyzer in CMS experiment. Okay. So, yes, okay. I'm actually looking for those. Maybe kind I of will just uh, put the link here on the chat so you can have it directly. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if we have any other questions whilst you're thinking perhaps of some questions. I was wondering, maybe Adina, could you? possibly explain the the recruitment process for people so that they would know what to expect yes of course apply. so it's it's a quite uh, i would say a classic recruitment process uh, uh, we receive uh, the, the the applications through uh, through our uh, we have an um, online um, uh, tool uh, because it's easier even for us and for the candidate to apply this way than by emails and then we lose the emails and so on uh, so this is the first step, and then we um, we analyze the, the the profiles with the hiring manager uh, regarding the the different requirements that we uh, we need for for the position, um, and afterwards um, it de it depends on the on the um, on the jobs, but the most of the times the first uh, screening is done with HR, where we talk about the motivations. Uh, the understanding of the job, uh, how they project uh, themselves themselves in uh, in uh, in uh, in this uh, in this kind of job, how they see uh, their career to to see if they fit with what we can offer also in in terms of career perspective and so on. Um, and then we have sometimes um, I would say a, a technical test and a, a technical interview or a business case. 
the interview with the hiring manager and sometimes with another person and that's it and then we make an offer yeah thank you very much thank you adina i see that yeah. we also have uh, we've got three more questions so yeah. i'll hand over to bria if you'd like to go for it please bria yes thanks a lot uh, you used to have a position which is called R and D physicist, and I see none uh, open at the moment. Is it uh, is there a plan to open such kind of uh, position in short term, or is it something you rec you renamed uh, somehow to to other? Uh... No, I think uh, it's it's already closed. The position we found probably found the, the good candidate for it. <laughs> Um, but I think uh, it will be another uh, um, R and D uh, physicist position, who uh, which will be open in the uh, probably uh, during the summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, because there is an internal move in, in fact, so that's why. Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> that's why we are, are yeah, we are yes. having this position. We we have uh, we have indeed uh, positions like that, but uh, if you are looking at such position. Uh, Sometimes the uh, the physicists, if they are uh, open to uh, engineering techniques and system engineering, uh, their profile may fit as well. Uh, because as Adina mentioned, we uh, we have a tradition to train uh, the people who uh, join uh, as well. So if we see during the interview that there is an interest, for instance, if as a physicist you have a, you start to be interested in model based uh, system engineering, uh, then uh, you may as well. Uh, be a good candidate for uh, for position in system architecture, uh, for instance, yeah. because you understand how it works, and then the interface and how you uh, divide the uh, how you uh, divide the system into different subsystems and what these subsystems subsystems should do. Uh, you may be in a good position to understand that and have a positive impact as well. Uh, so, uh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so let's go with uh, Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan, if you'd like to go for it, and then Tutong. Yes, hello, I'll keep it short. Uh, my question is, uh, do you have uh, sh um, opportunities for short-term internships for say three months or something for students? Yes, Yes, indeed, yeah. So we do have, um, so um, roughly we, we welcome more or less 40 uh, uh, interns per year. So it's quite high. <laughs> um and uh, yeah we have different projects uh, that are sometimes um, you know opportunities when we have a great uh, a great uh, cv from a from a from an intern or uh, sometimes they are this they are defined uh, beforehand so it depends a little bit um so yes indeed you, we have also opportunities for, yes. uh, for the, the, the stage for interns is quite easy uh, and, uh, and and everything is set. We have all the tools to uh, to welcome uh, to welcome people. It's really a matter of finding the right match between uh, the uh, expectations for the internship and uh, the ongoing project uh, in their timing. So uh, uh, we are always open to uh, to such discussion, uh, whatever the duration. Uh, we, I currently have in my team two uh, interns. Uh, one is for six weeks and the other for uh, two months. But it really depends as well on the uh, academic um, expectations that sometimes go with the, with the internships and, uh, and that kind of things. But we are always open to discuss. Thank you very much. Very Thank positive. You. Great. Thank you. And now let's take final question for today. Um, Tutong Tan, please. Hello, um, thank you for uh, letting me ask the, the final question. So um, I have a question about uh, during the hiring process because um, I'm, I'm doing data analysis in um, CMS right now. And my personal interest, I want to slightly change it a little bit to do more in the hardware or in the R&D um, research. So is it possible uh, or how flexible it is um, for, for example, someone like me, you want to explore an other aspect uh, in, in your company? Uh, yes, why not? De depends what you, depends what, uh, because hardware uh, can be uh, relatively large uh, as a topic, yeah. uh, but uh, 
but uh, but yes, we we are always uh, we are always open. In uh-huh. when it's like that, my advice would be to uh, to write a motivation letter uh, yeah. together with the uh, with the resume because if you don't tick all the boxes uh, with the resume, uh, mm-hmm. but a good letter accompanying it, uh, you may catch attention uh, there. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So we've come to the end. It went super fast. I hope that everyone found it extremely informative. It was very clear, great presentation. So a huge thank you to you, Eric and Adina. So uh, all that remains to be said is bon appétit to everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Eric and Adina. And thank um, thanks to everyone for joining. And uh, we'll see you all soon.